off this countdown at number 10 is York County, Pennsylvania. York County, Pennsylvania has become a popular tourist destination due to two circling urban legends that suggest it is the home to the seven gates of hell. I've always wondered where the seven gates of hell are. One legend claims that the area was once the home to an insane asylum that burned down with all the patients inside. The other legend claims that there was once an eccentric physician who built several gates along the path that led into the forest. The thing that these two stories have in common is that if you pass through all seven of the gates located in the area, then you'll find your way into the underworld. Legend also says that no one has ever made it past the fifth gate, and this may be due to the fact that the gates are located on private property, so those who even attempt to cross it may just be the subject of a trespassing ticket. Worth it in my opinion. I'd like to try to get to gate seven. The Capuchin Crypt climbs onto this list at number 9. Located inside of the Capuchin Museum in Italy, there's a locked crypt, but people can go inside and take a look around. Inside of the crypt, there are bones and human remains from 4,000 dead Capuchin monks, and the bones are arranged in a strange but decorative way. There are a total of 6 rooms that are full of human bones, and some of the skeletons even have a rotting flesh on them. This might be the creepiest and the most immortal thing that I've ever seen. I think this door should be locked away forever and we should never talk about this place. So you know what, Let, let's move on and stop talking about it. Moving up on this list at number 8, we're talking about the unnumbered room in the Congress Plaza Hotel. It's located in Chicago, Illinois. There's a hotel that is full of mysteries. There are a ton of rooms that have been blocked off to the public because bad things happen in there. One of the biggest mysteries is an unnumbered room on the 12th floor. Rumors say that this room is so haunted and terrifying that it had to be completely sealed off. Staff members refuse to talk about this room and no one really knows what goes on behind the sealed doors. All we know for certain is that we are a lot safer for not entering this room and for keeping it locked. Mysterious Cave comes in at number 7. This place is known as Dungeon Rock which is located in the Linwoods in Massachusetts. So this story begins back in the 1600s when a pirate hid in this cave with his treasure. He lived there for a long time until a devastating earthquake caused boulders to fall and block the opening of the cave. So fast forward to today, the cave now has an iron door that mysteriously opens for a few hours during the day. The cave is very dark, wet and cold. If you're brave enough, you can take the thin wooden steps that lead to the floor of the cave where you can go exploring. But be warned, this cave is reported to be extremely haunted haunted by the trapped spirit of the pirate. There are rumors I can hear him screaming and you can hear him trying to dig himself out. Some people have even said that they've seen a phantom dressed in a red robe that will stalk you until you leave the cave. So you better leave them alone. Digging deep into this list at number 6, we have the Paris Catacombs. Technically these doors are unlocked during the day, so visitors and tourists can explore the catacombs, but I'm going to suggest that we weld these doors shut. Why? Well this mysterious place is a 200 mile network of old caves, tunnels and pits that are full of skulls and bones from the dead. A lot of the catacombs are blocked up from the public and it's actually illegal to explore these caves unsupervised. But there are a lot of adventure seekers who use hidden entrances located all around the city. However, there are a bunch of unlucky souls who decided to explore the caves on their own, but they ended up getting lost and dying down there. And because there are millions of tunnels, they will probably never be found. They're going to become one of the skulls down there. Edinburgh vaults drop onto this list at number 5. These are a series of chamber arches that used to be the home of local taverns, cobblers and shops but they also have a dark side. The vaults were also known as a den full of thieves, murderers and other nasty people. For these reasons the vaults were one of the most dangerous parts in the city. Even to this day ghosts and criminals are still lurking in this underground city. People who have snuck into the vaults have felt the presence grab them and pull them into other rooms. 
rooms, while others say that you get a really strange feeling once you go down the stairs. One of the most infamous ghosts in the vault is known to throw rocks at you and he's going to follow you around the tunnel until you leave. Number 4 takes us to the Cecil Hotel. This creepy hotel is located in downtown LA off the Skid Row which makes it even more scarier. This building has a dark history of murders, suicides and unexplained deaths. Do you guys know who Elsa Lamb is? Well she is a woman who mysteriously vanished somewhere in this hotel. When the police did their investigation they came across this surveillance footage. Take a look at this. Nearly three weeks after she vanished, her body was found inside one of these water tanks on top of the hotel. There were a ton of theories about how she died. Some think that she died from a paranormal elevator game and others believe that the cursed hotel possessed her. So ever since people have been complaining that this hotel is possessed or cursed, and if anyone stays there, something bad will happen to them. Diving into number three, we have an underwater ghost town inside of Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. There is a lake that has a secret beneath its surface. There is a scary underwater ghost town with a lot of mysterious doors. If you're brave enough, I, I'm not brave enough, you can actually put on a scuba gear and go exploring but I have to warn you, a lot of unexplained occurrences have happened there. Some divers reported that as soon as they opened one door, their oxygen ran out. Another diver's face mask cracked and someone's breathing piece just broke off. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty happy with not seeing this underwater ghost town. I'll just Google search it and try to look for images. A gallery storage room breaks into this list at number two. This is a painting called The Hands Resist Him. It's probably the creepiest and scariest painting that you're ever going to see. But it's also known as one of the most haunted paintings of our time. It was painted by an artist named Bill Stoneham and he created it as a way to express his feelings about being adopted. The painting was purchased back in 1974 from an art gallery but the family who bought it had no idea what was in store for them. Within a matter of years, the owner of the art gallery, the person who bought the painting and the art critic who wrote about the painting just mysteriously died. The creepy painting resurfaced on eBay and for some reason, it was sold again. The new owner said that the figures in the artwork came to life at night. Some people who looked at the painting blacked out immediately and they suffered from a physical illness shortly after. For those reasons, the painting has been picked up by another art gallery and it's locked away in their storage space. And don't worry, they don't have any intentions of going into that room or displaying that evil painting. Chernobyl makes it into number one. Inside of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant under reactor room 217 there is something called the elephant's foot. This is an extremely radioactive mass of corium that was created during the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. The elephant's foot is still melting into the base of the building and if it hits the ground it could trigger another explosion or leak radioactive material into the nearby water that people drink. This is what happens if you step foot into this room. After 30 seconds of exposure Exposure, you'll feel extreme dizziness and tiredness that's gonna last you for a week. Two minutes exposure and your cells will soon begin to hemorrhage. Four minutes you will have uncontrollable vomiting, diarrhea and fever. And if you manage to last 300 seconds, you will have two days to live. For those reasons, this place has been sealed shut, but it is still being closely monitored. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret roommate. A group of Ohio State University students kept waking up in the middle of the night by strange noises coming from their basement. They also noticed that their cupboard doors would open up by themselves. Upon investigating, they found that their basement had a trap door which led to a secret room. And guess what? They found that someone had been living there. The room had textbooks, a TV, and a bed. The secret roommate turned out to be the previous resident's cousin. As a result, the students evicted this dude and changed all the locks on their house. I'm just wondering how this guy got in and out without being caught because there was no other exit or entrance so he would have to go through the front door. Like, how is he that stealthy? Well, I guess not that stealthy because he was caught. But also imagine taking a date home to that place and being like, here's my place. Just 
come on through this trap door. In our number nine spot today, we have the Actune Tuna Chill Monk Nile Cave. I probably said that horribly wrong, so I apologize. <laughs> this cave sits in the middle of the jungle in Belize and wasn't found until 1989. To even access the cave, you have to swim in and then wade up in the cave river for a kilometer. After this, once you walk another kilometer and a half past some huge boulders and many large rooms, one of which is known as the cathedral, you'll make it to the back of the cave where you'll find the skeletons of the ritual sacrifices made by the Maya in order to appease their gods from over a thousand years ago. The skeletons are plentiful and they range in age, but they mostly all were sacrificed in the same way, which is a little too gruesome for me to say on YouTube. There is one skeleton that stands out in particular, however, and is known as the Crystal Maiden. This skeleton belonged to a boy and is unique in its positioning, as well as the fact that it has two crushed vertebrae, which suggests to researchers that this person may have died in a more violent way than the others. This skeleton has been laying in this cave for the last 1,100 years, which is long enough for it to have completely calcified, which gives it a sparkling appearance. The reason for the sacrifices are unknown, but it is believed that it was either to appease the gods of the underworld, or because those who were sacrificed were believed to be witches, so they were intentionally left there, unburied, so that their souls would be trapped. Regardless of whatever secrets this cave is holding, it is believed to be tied to the underworld in some way or another, and I have to agree that the evidence is compelling. Sliding into the number eight spot is the Masaya Volcano. The Masaya Volcano is located in Nicaragua and for years has been believed to be the mouth of hell. It is believed that some sort of god or sorceress or demon lives inside the fiery pit of the caldera. Due to the frequent and unpredictable eruptions from the volcano, it became quite feared by those who lived in the area surrounding it, and it became a place of human sacrifice in an attempt to appease whatever high power was controlling the eruptions. In 1529, a man climbed to the top of the volcano and placed a cross up there as he was hoping it would call on Jesus to help as well as work to exercise whatever demon lived within the depths of the magma so as to stop the flowing lava. It was written in 1541 that the continuous volcanic activity must have been due to supernatural causes and it was called the place from which the condemned are thrown by the demons. Sounds terrifying. <laughs> In our number seven spot today, we have Mount Hecla. Mount Hecla is a stratovolcano that is located in South Iceland. This is an extremely active volcano site, which has probably not helped with the belief that it is an entrance to hell. There is an Anglo Norman poem entitled Voyage of Saint Brendan, and in it, it mentions that this volcano is the prison of Judas, who was the apostle who famously betrayed Jesus, which is just not a good look for either Judas or this volcano. Birds flying around the volcano were once thought to be lost souls, and it was believed that the volcano was the meeting site for many witches who were intending to meet with the devil. All of these legends combined, it totally makes sense as to why people would think some sort of dark and evil powers lurk inside of this volcano, especially considering it is one of the most active volcanoes in Iceland. Moving on to number 6, we have Lacus Curtius. Legend has it that this location in the middle of the Roman Forum is an entrance to the underworld. According to Roman historians, this pit appeared in the middle of Rome and nothing could fill it. This led to an oracle prophesizing that the pit would not close until a sacrifice was made, and if no sacrifice occurred, the abyss would destroy the Roman Republic. Of course, neither of these are great options, but one guy was willing to take one for the team. Not me. Marcus Curtius, who the site is now named after, realized that the strength of Rome relied on its weapons and the bravery of its citizens, so with weapons and a full suit of armor, he rode his horse straight into the pit where both of them perished. While he was of course regarded as a hero, it is said that he rode straight into the underworld. Is he a hero though? Or just a fool? <laughs> In our number five spot today, we have the Gates of Guinea. In the world of voodoo, the souls of the dead live in an area of the underworld called Guinea, and they must pass through this area in order to reach the deep waters where they'll be reunited with their ancestors. Before they reach the deep waters, however, they are the most susceptible to being zombified by hoodoo magicians, which is why they must pass through the seven gates before this happens. Once through the seven gates, they'll meet the spirit called Baron Samdi, who is the one who presides over Guinea. 
Once they meet the spirit, he will guide them into the world of the dead. Some people believe that the seven gates are a spiritual thing, but others believe they exist in the real physical world in New Orleans. Here's where things get freaky though. The gates have to be passed through in the proper order. If passed through in the incorrect order, the gates can allow dangerous spirits to enter the world of the living, where they will then grab humans to drag down with them into the underworld. There's a traditional voodoo rhyme that goes along with this that is said to describe the proper timing for opening the gates of Guinea, and that is seven nights, seven moons, seven gates, seven tombs. The final important part of this process is that the guardian at each gate needs to have respects paid to them, so if you're ever passing through the gates of Guinea, just keep that in mind. In spot number four is Centralia, Pennsylvania. This store to hell is located in Pennsylvania underneath the cracked asphalt of one of the town's streets. Under these streets is an underground coal mine fire that was first set ablaze in 1962, and it just may continue burning for another couple hundred years, or maybe forever if it really is the entrance to hell. It is unknown exactly how the fire has started, which is the topic of many arguments, but it quickly burned through all of the old networks of shafts and tunnels. After the fire started, sinkholes began to appear all over and steam plumes, which were full of lethal amounts of carbon monoxide, began to rise from the ground. People started to compare what was going on underneath the city to what hell must be like. Once 1984 rolled around, the government began urging people to leave the city and even claimed to help with relocating costs. But as of 2013, there were eight residents who refused to leave and they ended up settling a lawsuit that included a three $349,500 settlement and the right to reside in the town until the end of their lives. In our number three spot today, we have the Darvaza Gas Crater. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far because it really helps us out. The Darvaza Gas Crater has been nicknamed the door to hell for a pretty good reason. This crater is located in Darvaza, Turkmenistan, and it serves as a popular destination for tourists to go and see. The crater is the aftermath of the field being drilled into because it was thought to be a substantial oil site, but quickly after they discovered its natural gas pocket, it ended up collapsing. It is said that the fire was lit by geologists who wanted to prevent the spread of methane gas. It looks so cool, but one of the craziest things about it is that it has been burning since 1971. The scientists originally predicted that it would burn for a few weeks, but it has been over 50 years. The crater is 69 meters or 226 feet in diameter and is 30 meters or 98 feet deep. One random but kind of creepy fact about the crater is that camel spiders fly to it in the evening because of its light and warmth, but they often end up falling in to their death. That was dark. Taking over the number two spot is Mount Asor, Japan. Mount Asor is the name that relates not to just one single mountain, but an entire mountainous area. The name of it translates to Mount Fear, and this area is known as the entrance to the afterlife because it features all of the geographical elements that are similar to the Japanese Buddhist descriptions of both paradise and hell. Not only is the area home to eight symbolic mountainous peaks, but also a lake and highly acidic water that only one species of fish can survive in, and none other than a bunch of pits of vipers. Beyond this, however, there is a river that is known as the boundary between earth and hell. This is where all the souls must cross in order to reach the afterlife, and if you were to visit the area, you would find statues and offerings along the banks of the river, which are intended to help the past souls find their way on the journey, because it is definitely not good if the souls get lost along the way. Every year from July 22nd to the 24th, those wanting to communicate with the dead will head to the temple located here to speak with spiritual mediums. And in our number one spot today, we have Fengdu. Fengdu is located in China and is also often referred to as the city of ghosts. For a long time, it has been believed that this is where the dead stop on their way towards the afterlife, and it is here where they must pass three tests in order to pass on to their next life. The first test is for the newly departed soul who must cross over the bridge of helplessness, which is meant to judge their virtue. There are demons there who judge whether the soul is good or bad, and the good ones can pass while the bad ones are pushed 
into the water below. The ones who pass the first test go on to the ghost torturing pass, where they present themselves for judgment in front of Yan Luo Wang, who is a Chinese deity who is also ruler of the underworld. If they pass the judgment test, then the third and final trial takes place at the Tianzi Palace, where they will stand on a certain stone on one leg for three minutes. This is because it is said that only a good soul can accomplish this, while an evil one will fail and be condemned to hell. Other than being the site for these three tests, Fengdu also now has many temples and shrines, which hold paintings and sculptures that depict people being tortured for their sins. So all of this really goes to show exactly why people believe why this place just may be the entrance to the underworld. Let's get this list started in at number 10 with Hauska Castle Pit. In the Czech Republic, there is a place known as the Chapel of the Hauska Castle, and this is definitely a place you never want to visit. This building was constructed over a bottomless pit that is known as a gateway to hell. And I'm just so confused by the architect who decided to build a castle on a bottomless pit. It doesn't sound like, you know, the safest option. Anyways, the castle was built without running water, a kitchen, and it's not near any main road. Road. Legends has it that when construction began, death row inmates were offered a pardon if they signed a consent form to be lowered by rope into the hole. They were supposed to report what they saw down there. Well, when the first person was lowered, he began to scream his head off and he was immediately pulled back up to the surface. But it looked like he aged about 30 years because he had a ton of wrinkles and his hair turned white. And now this castle is bolted off and locked so that no one can go inside. Not that you would really want to anyways. In our ninth spot, we have the Franklin Castle. The Franklin Castle, otherwise known as the Tiedman House, is a mansion located in Cleveland, Ohio. Built between 1881 to 1883, this mansion was first home to Hans Tiedman, his wife, and kids. This mansion has four stories, more than 20 rooms, and 80 windows. Apparently, there are a couple of trap doors all throughout this house, some of which have been removed for being way too dangerous. It's also said that the castle had hidden rooms and passageways that were used for bootlegging during the prohibition. Now, what I failed to mention is that this castle is haunted. Yep. One of the owners of the house reported several encounters with ghosts. They even attempted exorcisms and had a ghost hunted group investigate the property. In 1975, human bones were found in the closet. Thought that maybe they were planted there as a publicity stunt, but we still don't know. So imagine going through the trapdoor only to be encountered by a ghost. In our 8th spot, we have the Secret Dungeon. A couple of years ago, a man named Daniel Carley moved into a rented apartment by himself. After settling into his new place, he noticed a trap door in the floor. It was filled with a bunch of clutter like old movies and painting supplies. However, when he moved all that stuff, he found stairs leading into a whole underground dungeon. Now this place was huge, it led all the way under his neighbor's apartment as well. There were endless nooks and corners. One of the things he found down there was a piece of newspaper from the sun dated back to 1984. The whole spot is pretty cool though, like if he did some renovating and redecorating, he could have like a sweet little secret party room. Coming in at number 7, we have the mysterious tenant. I don't know what I would do if I figured out some person was secretly living in my house with me. I feel like I would just move ASAP. Well, this is exactly what happened to this next individual. This student decided to move into a house in New Mexico. However, he started to hear weird noises coming from under his floorboards. Upon investigating, he found a trap door underneath his pantry. Inside, there were working lights, a desk, and a recently smoked cigarette. But he never caught the mysterious tenant. One day, he returned back to the space to find that it had been vacated and the inhabitant never returned. Coming in at number 6, we have the cabin in the woods. For years, a man named Simon lived in a small cabin in the woods. Under his kitchen table, there was always this mysterious secret door, but he refused to open it. A lot of guests grew curious and even suspicious of Simon, thinking maybe he was hiding something down there. Eventually, he caved in and got a handyman to come and open it up for him. Upon opening the trap door, a bunch of venomous funnel weaver spiders crawled out. Bites from these spiders have the capability to rot human flesh. 
As a result, they had to be extremely careful. The handyman ended up lowering himself down, and there he found a trough filled with this weird slime. It stunk, and Simon feared, thinking that it was a decaying body. Thankfully, it wasn't. Upon further investigating, the man found a secret hole in the wall. In there was a pile of charred remains. There was no furnace down there, so they were concerned about why someone was burning stuff down there and what the remains were. Personally, I don't think they were roasting marshmallows down there. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the armed room. A man whose identity is being kept a secret noticed a weird trap door in the basement of his house. And boy was he shocked at what he found. The space was lined with ammunition and empty gun cases. There were tons of boxes all filled with live rounds. Now, there were only the gun cases and no guns, so this made him wonder where all the guns are and why the owner left this much ammo. Like seriously, what was this dude preparing for? But that's not all. He also found a grenade without a pin in it. Thankfully, the powder was all drained from it, but still, that's enough to give someone a heart attack. The man also found a safe which he was unable to open, but he did say he was going to get a professional locksmith to open it, and then he would update us when it was opened. But this was a while ago, and there's still no update, so hope this dude's alright. Moving on to number 4, we have the religious hideaway. One drunken evening, the Farless family decided to pry open a metal grate in the floor of their home. Inside, they discovered a mysterious brick room which appeared to be a chapel. On the floor lay a wooden cross and along the walls were pews made from bricks. It's thought that this room was a hideaway for persecuted Catholics. It's pretty creepy, but also really fascinating. They also found an old chest that had newspapers and bottles dated back to the 1930s. In our third spot, we have the hidden tapes. In 2014, the Reddit user Lumberjack documented his findings of a trapdoor in his attic. This led to a crawl space with an all black locked door. Behind the door, he found a room in which the walls, floor, and ceiling were all completely covered with soundproofing boards and plastic tarp. So basically it's like Dexter's hideaway. He also found a briefcase containing an old jewelry box and some mail. He also found a safe containing a bunch of tapes. One of the tapes was labeled no no no. He ended up turning the evidence over to the police and had to remove his original post because apparently his findings were relevant to an ongoing case. In our second spot, we have the hideaway. Upon moving into their home, a group of Norwegian students were told by their landlord that a secret hiding place was somewhere in their house. Being curious, they started investigating and looking for it. That's when they noticed a trap door in the ceiling. But they didn't find anything too fascinating there, just old IKEA bags and a dirty rug. But then they noticed a hidden panel in the wall. In the panel, they found a secret hideout from World War II. Inside this hideout was a sign that read, if you have a bad stomach, then you do not have access. They also found a makeshift alarm to warn of intruders and a very old map of Europe. And in our number one spot, we have the murder castle. The murder castle is the name given to the home that serial killer H.H. H. Holmes created. Herman Webster Mudgkit, otherwise known as Dr. Henry Howard Holmes, or H.H. H. Holmes, moved to Chicago in 1886 and got a job as a pharmacist under the name Dr. H.H. H. Holmes. However, he was killing people in order to steal their property. He got his employees to write him down as a beneficiary so that he would get all the money after he killed them. Then he would sell the bodies of his victims to medical schools. He then took this money to create an elaborate home filled with secret passages, trap doors, and booby traps. The trap doors in his home would open up and drop his victims into the basement where then he would kill them. Eventually, he admitted to 27 murders, but officials believe that he killed closer to 200 individuals. 